Hey guys, Simon Bryson here, and welcome to the Axe Tommy Bryson channel, okay? Where you actually call me and I pick your calls up and just go directly and talk to you one on one. Now, if you guys are new here, make sure to go ahead and like the video on top of also subscribe and hit the bell to get notified. If you guys want to join me on this channel, well, link down below to the calendar and sign up for free. That way, you can come on the channel and just basically talk to me about money, finance, anything you want to talk about. Now, let's go ahead and call Ray. Hello? Hi, hello, is this Ray? Yes, this is Tommy. Yeah, hey, Ray. Yeah, it's Tommy. How can I help you, bro? Hey, hey, uh, first and foremost, uh, thank you, and I uh, uh, hope you and your family are well. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. Okay, so jumping right into it, here is the question I have. So let me just kind of explain a little bit and then jump right into it. Okay. So uh, uh, paying off the bad debt, the bad debt being my credit card debt, I have about mm -hmm. 6k and bad credit card debt um mm -hmm. and i have two options um mm -hmm. the bad credit card debt um it's still within the promotional period where i'm not paying any interest so i would just being able to pay off the minimum and just a little bit more and more and more and it okay. reached um uh, and the promotion ends um in april so in april that's when i'll have to pay the high interest rates if it's not paid off in full so yeah. i can either a um roll uh instead of rolling over uh the 5500 that was in my roth ira account that i had with td bank i started mm -hmm. a roth ira account a few years ago um literally didn't pick any stocks or anything because i didn't know what i was doing i was very wow. you know naive so yeah. basically um so basically um i was going to transition i have another roth ira thank you for that video uh with mm -hmm. m1 finance i copied your portfolio and i've been up on it awesome. thank you uh, I was going to roll over that for the 2020 year, not the 2021, the 2020 year. But I said, hold on a second. I know about yeah. the uh, penalty. Should I just use the 5,500 to pay off uh, the majority of the 6K <clears throat> or and just take the fee penalty for that? Or does it make sense to take about 4K out of my Robinhood account because I've been investing um, into certain stocks with Robinhood. It's still within that one year time period. Yeah. Um, and then I know I'll have to take fees on that. I'm just trying to figure out what makes more sense using the 5,500, um, taking the fee penalty for that to, um, annihilate my 6k in credit card debt, or mm -hmm. should I take 4k out of my Robinhood uh, account, pay the fees that come with that to tackle my 6k in credit card debt? That is my question. All right. So Ray, there's a third option here. The third option is that your contributions to a Roth IRA, if you take them out, they're not taxable. Only the gains that you actually had in the in the Roth IRA are actually gonna be taxable. Mm. So say for example, if I contributed a thousand dollars and I have, for example, fifty dollars in gains, I can take my money back out, right? Because that's that's no problem there. But if I take out the mm -hmm. gains, that's where the penalties come into play. So if those $5,500 are just basic contributions that you actually made, like you told me, you can potentially mm -hmm. double check this stuff. You can potentially just go ahead and take that money out, right? Because you haven't selected anything. Mm -hmm. You're not selling anything whatsoever. It's just your contributions. Just take that money out and just basically go ahead and pay off the debt. Oh, okay. And and, and, and just to clarify, because uh, I did it with TD Bank a few years ago, literally mm -hmm. uh, there's even through the uh, TD Bank app, there's no way, and I even met, I went to the TD Bank branch, I spoke with uh, managers in there. I mm -hmm. don't see any way I can pick like specific like stocks or anything like that. So it literally was, hey, you know, I'm, my name's Ray, here's 5,500, I wanna sign up for the Roth IRA, and that yeah. was it. No stocks picked, no anything. Yeah, a lot of people get confused, right? Cause the thing like basically like when I put money into a Roth, like that's it, like, okay, I'm investing now. No, it's, it's more like an account, right? The account, the money is there. But you still got to go inside, for example, and then go ahead and select the stocks. Most likely, they didn't clarify exactly how to do it. So that's probably why you didn't know. There's people that have been going like years, just basically just like putting money into a Roth and never investing. But at least you kind of like picked up on it. We're like, okay, wait, <laughs> there might be a problem here. Okay. So if the money in there has just been contributed, you have no gains on it. You can potentially just take that money out penalty free because it's your money. No problem. And basically go ahead and pay off the debt. As far as, for example, the money you have, for example, in my finance with my portfolios you copied over, you don't want to sell mm -hmm. that stuff, okay? One thing is this, mm -hmm. though. 
So that's 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 solved right there, right? But I want to know exactly what is your income right now? Uh, my income right now, uh, 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 paycheck wise or like yearly? Your month, your monthly um, after tax income. Um, after taxes, it's roughly a three k. Three thousand dollars. Yes. And um, what would you say your expenses are? Uh, my expenses, my expenses are um, about twelve hundred dollars in rent, um, and everything else. I would say it's pretty much like one full paycheck, so about fifteen hundred dollars. One paycheck goes towards um, what I need to survive. Okay, so sounds like hey, I have left over fifteen hundred dollars. And by the way, you're in New Jersey, right? Yes. Yeah. So right, even even okay, right? So you take the money out from the entire like on um, Roth IRA, right? the contributions, not the actual gains. And it should, it should be penalty free, but just verify so everything's good. And you also have fifteen hundred dollars extra. You, you're done with that debt. It, it, it's zoned out. Like you're clear to go. There's no need to go ahead and sell your stocks now. There might be a need. By the way, the Robinhood stocks you have. What have you invested into? So I invested into. Hold on, let me just bring it up real quick. Um, I invested into Bitcoin. Um, I made money off of that. Um, Till Ray, some we stocks, uh, Dave and Buster's, which was uh, making me a lot of money. Um, and AMC, AMC was a sleeper. A lot of people thought it would be down and I just went with my own gut. Cause I'm like, no, based off of social media and everything, a lot of people want to return to these movie theaters when it eventually opens, if it stays mm -hmm. afoot and then it starts spiking up again. So um, a lot of stocks I've been investing in have been like really good stocks and I'm, I'm up within my Robinhood uh, portfolio. How much money do you have in there? Uh, in total, I have, yeah. um, without uh, including the in current investments, it's uh, $4,400. $4, so that's uh, uh, with the investments included. If I were to sell everything, um, 4400 And roughly. how much do you have in your in your M1, like for your normal and, investments? Uh, for my M1, I have, uh, this one, is uh, it was opened somewhat recently. I have... Uh, seven hundred and thirty dollars, and it, it's your exact portfolio. I just copied it over and everything. Okay, now here's what this sounds like, Ray. It sounds like you're you're bad and heavy on a lot of speculation. Now, speculation versus investing. Investing is investing, knowing the facts, right? The facts are, what are the financials of this company? Yes, for example, AMC is a company. Dave and Buster's is a company. Bitcoin is like this whole thing. People are gassing it up right now, but the whole thing. Do you have facts, right? Financials. Can you analyze the company's intrinsic value? Look at his 10K forms, 10Q forms. If the answer is no to those questions, then usually what you're doing is speculating. Now, nothing wrong with speculating as long as you're following, for example, the 90-10 rule. Meaning, I can put 10% of my money towards having fun. If, it ha if something happens, great. If I lose it, no problem. But the other 9% should be going, for example, for your retirement or for just like um investing in the things you do understand, like basically like ETFs and so on. But um, Bitcoin, um, Dave and Buster's AMC. It sounds like I checked social media. I had a gut feeling that that, that sounds like speculation because it could go the ne the other way. It happens to be that this time it went your way, so you're you're kind of like high on that boat, and I would be too. <laughs> but you but you want to be careful. No, that makes a lot of sense. And um, to be honest, I've been um, uh, through your video of recommendation. I've been reading the little book of a common sense investing. And that put yeah. me up on a lot of game about, Hey, like, you know, stick to the winning strategy and, you yeah. know, shy away from that. So my current Robin Hood investments has been, um, uh, a few months ago where that, uh, those investments were made a few months ago, but, yeah. um, I haven't put in any, uh, new recent money into it. Yeah. Okay. I, okay. That makes sense. Okay. Now you have, you have two options here with this, um, money that is in, in Robin Hood, right? You can a either keep it, and consider it speculation money. So you can lose 100% of it or you can make a lot of money. Nobody knows what happened there. It's like a big risk. Nobody knows, right? Or you can mm -hmm. take that money out and just put that money, for example, into your ETF portfolio or whatever you want to do. However, if you have that money in there and you want to have fun with it, I don't mind. Like have fun with that money, $4,400. But you should be, for example, grabbing the bulk of your money and investing it. Of course, after you're done with all the debt that you have right now, Mm-hmm. Okay. About, no, that makes a, I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Ray. No, I was going to say that makes a lot of sense. And it sounds like, so, um, uh, do you think it'd just be a bit more wise? Because I definitely want to keep, uh, 
uh, the money I had invested in Bitcoin because I, based off of you and other people's videos and just a bit of research I've done on it, I do see it uh, going up. So I definitely do want to keep like um, and not sell my current uh, Bitcoin investments. But mm -hmm. for some of the other uh, investments I have, do you think it would make more sense to just kind of uh, liquidate that money and then put it into my uh, my current Roth IRA with uh, M1 Finance? Yeah. Here, here's what I'll tell you. I can't tell you what to do with your money or what to sell or not to sell, right? Because sometimes things go good, sometimes things go bad. But here's what I mm -hmm. would do with that money, right? It have, mm -hmm. it have, have for example, $4,400 that I'm just going to be having. By the way, you make a decent amount of money. Like $3,000 is a lot of money in New Jersey anywhere. $3,000 is a lot of money. Your expenses are pretty low also, right? So if you're making that mm -hmm. much money, the answer is if you want to have fun with $4,400 and keep it in there and speculate, no problem. My thing is if you're doing that, don't put any more money into it and just focus, mm -hmm. for example, on building up your Roth IRA and, for example, like your normal taxable accounts, whatever you want to do. So I, I don't I'm not saying, by the way, Bitcoin in a way is like this game, right? It's a game of I'm buying, hoping that the next guy pays more for it. Right. And mm -hmm. it's kind of like if the other guy doesn't pay more for it and there's no new money introduced to it, then what happens then? If people start, for example, selling like crazy, the whole thing drops. And then what I don't want is basically, hey, my name is Ray. I put a lot of money into this stuff. Now I'm gone. Okay, I lost everything. I don't know what to do now. I'm homeless. Mm -hmm. I don't mind, though, if you have money in that stuff, but you're basically investing over 90% of your money, for example, into things you do understand. And if you read that book, The Little Book, the little book of Common Sense Investing, it'll teach you a lot more just about index funds and why they're actually the best strategy. Because people that are picking stocks, usually, they're not winning. It just happens to be that we're in a in a, kind of like a, in a little section of history where people are making a lot of money with speculation, just like it happened in the past before. Like, okay, like the whole, like I'm roaring 20s or whatever, people make a lot of money. But when things are going good, everyone thinks it's going to last forever until things don't last forever. No, absolutely. And um, I really love how, and thank you again for that recommendation. I love how they're drilling that home and saying like, hey, don't take my word for it and just giving a bunch of different other yeah. people of like the financial goats of, don't find, don't try to find the needle in the haystack. Just yeah. buy the haystack. Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. Now, don't get me wrong, okay? There, there, is, there are people that can pick stocks, right? Like Warren Buffett is, is a big example of it. Peter Lynch, another great example. But investing into stocks, individual stocks, is not a part-time gig. It's a full-time gig, right? You have to be, it's, and it's boring too. It's very boring, by the way, because you're just reading financial statements all the time. It's boring for some people. So if you want to do that, that's fine. You can do that, but... If you're going to be working your normal job and you just want to retire with a lot of money and build financial freedom, usually that's not what you want to get into. And me right now, currently, I only made one. I only bought one stock in 2020, and that was Delta. And I'm up like around 128 percent. I'm not going to sell, mm -hmm. but neither am I going to go ahead and say, you know what? I'm going to take on investing like full time now. I, that's not my plan. So my I have over two, three, like hundred thousand dollars invested, for example, into ETFs. And then I have like this much of money right here into Delta. Kind of the same advice I'm giving you, okay? Because basically, you, right now, you're kind of like opposite, right? You have a lot of money into like individual individual like investments and a little bit of money into retirement. But as you keep investing more and more into your future, it'll be the opposite. Eventually, by the end of the year, you'll have five, well, it's, it's $6,000 right now for the Roth IRA. You can max it out to $6,000. You can have that money. Also, your brokerage account, have that money. And then your little position in the um, individual investments are going to be lower and lower and lower. But you'll keep growing and growing and growing. Does that make sense? Uh, no, it really does. And and just to clarify again, so for with your account, of course you have your Roth IRA that you max out. Um, I don't um, have a, I don't uh, qualify for a Roth IRA. I can't have a Roth IRA. Or too much me, money. Uh, oh, okay. Um, <laughs> I have a Roth IRA that I want to max out six um, mm -hmm. k. Six um, k. And then um, and also in M one Finance, um, it's it's uh, recommended to have another account where I'm pretty much investing into the same type of portfolio that's in my Roth IRA. Yeah. It's the one okay. I copied from you. Here's a clarification there. Here, here it is right here. Nice question, by the way. Usually what I recommend is this. If you have an employer that's giving you an employer match, free money, right? Mm -hmm. The idea is yep. you want to take advantage of that first, right? You get the, you invest as most money as possible to get all the free money they're going to give you. Don't max it out. Just get the free money. Once you have mm -hmm. that free money, okay, that's taking care of free money. You go ahead and you max out, for example, your Roth IRA. That's $6,000. All that money that builds up in there is going to be yours. No tax because basically you already pay the taxes beforehand. 
And then mm -hmm. if you have any more money left over, you can grab that money and invest it, for example, into a normal taxable brokerage account with the same idea, the same concept. And then <laughs> if you want to go even more crazy, you can say, hey, you know what? I want to invest into real estate also. And like follow the same strategy, even into real estate, like, hey, you know what? I'm not going to go into crazy debt with this stuff. Just like take it step by step, step by step. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. And and the final thing I have, uh, thank you for clarifying that. It makes a lot of sense. Um, when employee matchback, I understand that by default, you know, if you work for an employer, you definitely want to max out the uh, whatever cashback they're matching you with, of course. Um, if mine's is, let's say, uh, 2%, so a little on the small end, technically, mm -hmm. I could, when they say they're going to match 2%, is, and I know there's a, a big limit, and trust me, I'm not going to hit that limit because I don't make that much money, of course. Well, but, it's two percent um, up. To, it should be capped somewhere, right? It's two percent up to a certain percentage of your salary. So it's not it's not like unlimited two percent. I don't think that's how it works. But you want to ask your employer. So if they say, hey, it's two percent up to three thousand dollars or whatever it is or one thousand dollars, you want to ask them. Okay, because it's not just two okay. percent of the entire. Th that's not how it works. They're not gonna give you that much money, <laughs> but you wanna, yeah, yeah you you wanna ask them. It should, it should, they should have a cap there. There's a there's a cap so, there for sure somewhere. So just for the sake of numbers, if it said, uh, and I'm definitely gonna follow up with my employer. If it said we'll match uh, two percent of up to ten dollars, just for the sake of math. So that means that it would make a lot of sense for me to uh, mainly contribute just two dollars to uh, my savings for my paycheck. Well, it's, that's not. I don't think that's how you do the math there. I think or it's more me. like that um, was twenty percent. That was twenty percent. Yeah, yeah. So I think I think look right. So you don't get me up with the math. What you want to do is talk to the employer and say, hey, how much do I have to contribute to take advantage of the full match? Just ask that question, and they'll tell you immediately. Be like, okay, you can. You have to like um. Hey, Ray, you have to invest for example um either three thousand, five thousand dollars towards your retirement. Okay, I'll do that. Boom. Then once I'm done with that, okay, all that free money is mine. I go on, for example, to, hey, let me max out the Roth IRA and so on. Now, right, there is one question I want to ask you. How yep. did you land in this mess? I, I'm guessing they gave you 12 months or 18 months, right? With the whole credit card? Uh, yes, 18. Yes. Okay. Tell me that story. So the story was, um, it was my ignorance about money. That's literally what it was. It was my ignorance about money and there were at points where I cleaned up my debt, where I was credit card debt free. Mm -hmm. um, and then life happened. Um, I didn't know about emergency funds. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. that wasn't part of my world. And um, I actually got my uh, wisdom teeth taken out. And though my, um, my insurance, uh, uh, they took my insurance, I still owed, uh, what was it? I owed 1200 and then I needed car repairs, which was 2800 yeah. which was 4K. So that kind of, um, uh, uh, you know, caused a, a big chunk of debt. And yeah. then again, my ignorance, instead of like tackling that debt while I had interest free, yeah. I was just adding to it and then making yeah. very poor decisions. Yeah. You know, they, they call that a, a Lollapalooza effect. When one thing that one thing happens, it keeps happening to just like keep going. So you, you get your wisdom teeth removed, then you have like a like a whole other problem. Next year something else happens, and before you know it, you're like just in a in a, in a big mess. Yep. It and literally by the way, just snowballed. <laughs> you have any more debt aside from this credit card debt? Um, the only other debt I have is uh my card is my car and everything is paid off. Everything's paid off. The only thing I have is um my school debt. My school debt is around around like eighty k. Eighty k. Um, wow. I, yeah, I'm doing uh, I'm doing loan forgiveness. Um, so uh, on my tenth year, uh, they'll wipe away my debt for free. Like I'm I'm currently a part of that. And if mm -hmm. uh, by this I was playing around and wipes it away completely, that would be good as well. But um, yeah. right now, um, I'm still uh, doing qualified payments of zero dollars because it's um it's on hold for now, which is really good. Uh, yeah. But regardless, by the tenth year, uh, my debt will be uh, wiped away. Okay. I mean that that's t do you like the job you do now? Uh absolutely. I'm a, yeah. a mental health therapist. Yeah, so look man, that sounds awesome. If you if you I would say cause, you know it's a, it's a big sacrifice, right? If you if you hated that job though, right? And it was like 10 years just to get it forgiven, I would be like, "Hey, maybe you want to reconsider that, okay?" But if mm -hmm. it's 80k, you love the job you do, you'll pay like probably like the minimum on it and you'll be done for example in those 10 years, like there's no big problem there. The credit card debt you can probably wipe away. Do you have an emergency fund currently? Um, that's what I'm currently uh, building to because after I've been watching your videos, like becoming more educated on finances, uh, once this credit card debt of the 6K we were talking about, once that's mm -hmm. done, 
bam, I'm going right into the emergency fund. Because I trust me, I I do know now with full experience that things happen. Yeah, for sure. Look, since we already know one thing, we know one thing, right? You just contributed to the Roth. You're most likely you can get the money back. So that's 5500 500 extra. You're done with the credit card, right? So most likely, mm -hmm. once you're done with that, right, immediately, immediately go build up that emergency fund. Because again, sh like, let me not, let me not curse on this, but things are going to happen and you want to make yeah. sure you're solid to go. Does that make sense? 100%. And absolutely. Once this is done, once the credit card debt is officially, officially paid off, yeah. going right into emergency fund saving. All right. Awesome. So let me just see where, um, what are you going to be your action steps after this call? Like, what are you going to do? So after this call, uh, again, I'm a, a follow up with TD Bank just to be 100% certain that um, uh, everything is uh, what I uh, expect it is with my yes. TD. Because again, I didn't pick any stocks or anything like that. So mm -hmm. once that that's completely confirmed, I'm going to take that 5500 uh, I'm going to put it towards the credit card debt. And, and I do have more than 500 that I can spend on wiping away my uh, the debt completely. So once yes. that's um, taken care of. I already have a um, meeting next week scheduled uh, with uh, our finance person here at work. Um, yeah. And I'm going to ask that question exactly what you said. How much will I need to contribute to for the full max? Yeah. And, and then after that, I'm going, uh, well, even before that, because I'll schedule next week, um, uh, I'm going to uh, contribute. I must start contributing it to my Roth, my new, uh, or no, excuse me, I'm going to just start saving. I'm going to start saving yeah. for the emergency fund. Yeah, yeah. And let me ask you a question. It sounds like you can be in New Jersey for like a long time to come. Are you going to buy a house eventually? Yes. What's your plan for that? Uh, I want to get a two-family house. I want to uh, uh, rent the other half out, and I want to uh, make money off of that to pretty much be living for free. Um, mm -hmm. uh, that's my uh, strategy. Okay. One thing I lack from you, Ray, is, again, you know, things happen. If, say, for example, if it happens to your job, you want to make sure that you're good to go, emergency fund. But if that doesn't mm -hmm. last, you want to make sure you're also good to go, right? Because a mortgage is going to be like a massive thing. So one thing I would say is just follow the 33% the rule, the 33% rule, which basically means just make sure your mortgage, taxes, insurance, uh, maintenance, HOA fee are not over 33% of your monthly income on a 15-year mortgage. Okay. It's probably going to be pretty hard in New Jersey to find, for example, a two-family home that's going to do that for you because houses over there are a little bit more expensive. Okay. So you might want to consider, for example, if you do get a 15-year mortgage and you are, for example, debt-free already and you have, for mm -hmm. example, an emergency fund and you're basically investing, for example, 20% into your retirement, all that stuff, you're maxing it out, great. You should have at least like 50% extra of your income to put it towards the mortgage and finish, for example, in seven to ten years. Like once that, like once you have like your house, that foundation, you have the job mm -hmm. that you love. Ten years, for example, you're debt free. Like you have no cost of living, basically, like virtually, because it's just like, like taxes and insurance. You're good to go. If you then want to go ahead and buy like a rental property, no problem, right? Because at that point, I know for sure I'm Ray. I'm good to go, no matter what. Okay, nice. That makes a lot of sense. And I also plan on uh, opening my private practice soon, so. Um, hopefully, uh, I should be good to go in April with all the documentation, and everything. So that's even more revenue. So I'm definitely going to expedite the emergency fund process, make sure I have a comfortable amount in there. I mean, like you were saying, if you do open up your own practice, do you still get the whole, like, um, student loan forgiveness in 10 years? Uh, yes, I'm still keeping this job. Uh, the private practice is on the side. This is, uh, oh, wow. the loan forgiveness, as long as you're, yeah, the loan forgiveness is, um, if you're working for a nonprofit organization, which I am. That's awesome, man. For so ten just, years. Okay, so you just want some. You just want to get some extra money, basically. Yeah, extra money, and if that like really blows uh, blows up, like I uh, I believe it will. Of course, I'm mm -hmm. gonna still have my job because I want that loan forgiveness. But all of that again, again, th think think about it again. Up. Think about it again, though. Think about it again. Just pause there for a second. If my name is Ray and I started a business and this business I actually like more and I can basically give up the whole like um like ten year thing plan, I can let go of that, pay the student loan debt off. And I have my business paying me a lot more money. Don't get trapped, for example, like on that 10-year thing when you're making so much money and potential over here too. So just always, always reassess and weigh the options over. Don't 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 get so trapped into like, oh, I gotta do this for 10 years, and then I get that loan forgiveness or whatever, okay? 
Thank you for that. I that definitely made a light bulb go off in my head. Thank you for that. Yeah, always reassess. Always reassess. All right, brother. You have any more questions? Uh, no, that was it. You've been a big help. I definitely appreciate all the content that you make and um, keep doing your thing. Thank you, brother. Have a good day. You as and well. Have fun. Bye. All right, peace. I will do. Bye. All right, guys. So you know, one thing I love, guys is somebody having this massive problem and all of a sudden I tell them one thing and they're like, oh, so that's how you solve it. Like that little light bulb. I love when that feeling actually happens. So Ray, shout out to you, man. You're in a great position right now. Well, not like the best position, but at least you can go ahead and wipe that debt off, which is very important. And once that's done, you max out everything. You do everything you have to do with your investments. You buy your property, you start your practice, all this stuff. Just make sure don't take on too much leverage because it's kind of like, hey, I have 6K in credit card debt. I don't like that, but I'm going to like, for example, having, for example, a 400 to 500K mortgage for the next 30 years. Most likely, you're not going to like that either, okay? So be very careful with that. And by the way, for most people that tell me, Tommy, you know what? I want to work this job for 10, 10 years or whatever. Like I can get like student loan forgiveness. Usually I say, hey, reconsider maybe. If you don't like that job and you can go somewhere else, make more money, pay that off, be happier. Why wouldn't you want to do that? Okay. So I'm always very, very careful with basing dependent on companies and like government policies, all that stuff to then go ahead and take action in 10 years. That's for example, what is like, a, like a, that's like um one president now, um Biden's still there. Maybe if he wins again, and then maybe like another organization. Okay, you never know what the heck is going to happen. So always take it step by step and be careful. And one last thing I did not mention was this, Ray. Um, if you are gonna have this debt, for example, like once you're done with it and you want to keep that credit card, just put a small bill on it and cut the physical credit card. That way you don't use it again. But guys, overall, that is about it for this video. Um, if you want to join me on my next call, well, join me down below. The link is there. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for watching. As always, like if you liked it. On top of that, also, subscribe, hit the bell, get notified. And if you guys want to text me or talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, join me on Patreon, link down below, or send me a DM on Instagram at Tommy Bryson. And if you want to watch another call, well, here's that call right here. On top of that, click my face right here. See you guys tomorrow. And as always, peace.